for Iconic Lab. <coughs> Please welcome John. Thank you. So, um, yeah. so I know it's why it's all like Honey Labs a little bit confusing. Um, we, we took over what David Seppin took over Wide Cells a couple of months ago and he's been restructuring it. Um, and now Iconic Lab is a media and technology business that is going to be the primary business going forward. I'm going to touch on Wide Cells a little bit later on on the stem cell side of it, but this is more about Iconic Labs and the media side. So it's a bit of a media, a bit different than the, some of the presentations you've heard about so far. Um, but fundamentally, uh, we're a media and technology business. Um, we make a lot of our money from advertising. Um, as we said, we, we started uh, Unilad, which again I'm going to come on to in a minute, but it was the largest social media publisher in the world. Um, I think I'm going to tell you a little bit about the opportunity, our plan and how we're getting on with it. It's going to be quite short and sweet, so we have time for questions hopefully. But we've got a very simple objective here. Um, we're looking to get revenues in as soon as possible get cash flow positive as soon as possible, and then we think from that base, there's a big opportunity um, to grow into lots of different areas, uh, and there's a potential roll-up opportunity in the media and technology space as well. It's gonna be driven by myself um, and Liam, who's at the back there, a bit of a black eye, if you wanna recognize him, I'll let him tell you that story. Uh, and then and Sam uh, and David Sefton, three of us were at Unilad, um, and we were, um, you know, I was the MD, Liam was one of the founders, and Sam was a uh, chief of product and marketing, uh, and we're looking to bring those skills into our new venture. So the reason why we're here, the opportunity, uh, is all down to one, I think, one fundamental change, fundamental shift in the user behavior of how people consume media and where their eyeballs are. And that's no longer on television, um, and instead consuming content um, across social media platforms, across co platforms like Netflix, um, but fundamentally, young people, um, you know, it's a bit hyperbolic, but young people don't really watch TV in, in the same way as, as other people and other generations before them now. Now, what that means for us and the opportunities we see uh, are twofold. Number one is creating content for those new platforms, which are increasingly, increasingly fragmented uh, and need to uh, differentiate themselves by getting the best content out there. We think we're in an opportunity to make that content and build those brands on those platforms. Uh, and secondly, um, advertising and advertisers are looking to target these people. And we ourselves, obviously, again, know what these advertisers need to do. We advise, we've advised them in the past uh, and are doing so now in our new company, um, looking to target these people on these platforms because fundamentally, again, they're not where they used to be. They're on digital platforms, they're on social media platforms. The numbers are enormous, going in the right way. You can tell by the amount of people on Netflix, is, which has seen huge growth throughout the last couple of years. But also, again, you know, there's stuff like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but then there's also things like TikTok, which a year ago, no one ever heard of, and now has over 500 million users. So I think we're well placed to, to, be, to take advantage of this because of our previous experience. I'm not going to, I'm going to presume that no one knows who you lad is, but I hope some of you do. Um, so we started it from our bedrooms. Um, Liam put the £200 in. Um, so it's, uh, it was a bit of a rags to riches tale in that respect. We became the biggest publisher on social media platforms, and those are the ones I mentioned before, Facebook and Instagram, etc. Uh, and we were reaching over 500 million people a month, which is, you know, to put into context, more than Snapchat. Uh, more than Twitter. Um, we were sort of commercializing that by offering our clients, and some of them are listed here, some like Nike, Samsung, KFC, the British Army, the same skills uh, and content capabilities that we ourselves were using every day, which was, you know, you want to reach this audience, we know this audience, we know how to reach them, we know what they want, and we passed those um, skills onto them, and that's how we built our revenue model, which we grew. Uh, over 100% a year until we were just over 10 million. Now, the reason why we're here, and I guess not still at Unilad, is that we had, um, you know, part of building a company on 200 pounds is sometimes you don't always get the structures right from the start. We had a disagreement with a co-founder. He came back and um, got a judgment debt against us, and then he sold 
that debt to our biggest commercial rival at the end of last year it forced us to sell the business. So the business got sold for 17 million. Um, and um, so you can imagine we're, we're reasonably incentivized and pretty motivated uh, to, to crack on and, and make something new. So like, the good news, I guess, is that you know, we built the business. We have all the contacts uh, with clients, with the network of um, contacts in, in, in the media entertainment industries, and we're ready to sort of crack on now. So this is Iconic Labs, and this is the structure that we think we're going to have going forward. I'm going to touch on a couple of the bits that are very uh, relevant for immediate revenues, because some of the things we're going to phase in over time. Um, but we think that these are six complementary, complementary divisions, um, starting with an agency and consultancy, uh, and some online media brands, and then bringing in e-commerce, content studio, uh, a licensing division, and technology and technology product development. So this for us is how a modern agency um, will be structured, which is having a central core and then access to online media brands or where you can access insights, audience, um, and talent. So very simply, this is a reimagination re of the old agency model, whereas instead of buying media on television, you're buying it on social platforms. Um, instead of making TV ads, you're making uh, short videos, advertorials, um, memes, whatever it may be, for the content, for the, the, fits the, the fits the platform that they're going on. From our point of view, this is, this is our USP. You know, this is what we were best at. And where we differ from traditional agencies is that you know, we would often become, and we will become, the people where we get money for doing, creating the advert, but we also get money for putting the advert out so we get access to production and media spend. I'm just going to give you an example of some of the clients we've worked with, but a particular a case study of how we like to work with people. So we typically base everything on the insights. Um, and again, this is why it's so important to have access to those audiences that are giving you these data points that maybe TV doesn't. And this is how, you know, what content is working for the audience that the brand is kind of trying to target. And then once we're there, we like to work, this is a retained, this is a piece of retained business, this is a real life example of something we did at Unilad um, that myself and Liam brought in. And once we're there, we like to operate a reactive, always on um, contract where we're able to cre create content. It could be anything ranging from articles and um, explain the videos to a full-blown documentary which we did about this particular brand um, where we traveled to Kentucky and you know covered the founder's story at that point and then going forward it's about again it begins and ends with insights and analysis analyzing what happened what went well what could go better and looking to obviously retain the business and obviously upsell into other services this goes hand in hand with are sort of, I guess, what people probably know us best for. But again, this is our, this is what we can do with our eyes closed basically, is work with clients and also create and uh, create and build online media brands. So one thing where we think this is going to be different than Unilad, which is, you know, um, which had its time, but fundamentally we're not looking to recreate Unilad because I don't think it would work and things have moved on. What we are looking to do, though, is use some of the skills that we had there, which are still relevant today, and grow new brands in a slightly different strategy. So we're not interested, per se, in, in one big overall brand like Unilad was. We think the way things are going, and better, uh, a better opportunity for monetization is picking valuable verticals that are you know, not, not niches by any means, big, big verticals, but they perhaps will have um, distinct audiences, and we've listed some of them here, like you know, esports, enormous growth in esports, wellness, identity, uh, and news aimed at a Gen Z or a Gen Y audience. People under 30, it was, was always our, our speciality, and I think that's where we'll continue to be. So we have the ability to um, both grow these things ourselves, and, and also acquire these in the future, hopefully. Um, once we've built 
those two core divisions, then there's an opportunity to develop the rest of these. These are all ways of, frankly, monetizing and, and developing on that base. This can be from selling extra products, producing premium content that might appear on Netflix that starts on social media. This can be stuff where we ourselves decided to build a tech product of our own right. Maybe it's another social network in our own right. And also license our content to other publishers and TV production houses. We did all of these to some degree at Unilad, and we looked at, we're looking to build them in over time with the, with the new company, Iconic Labs. How we see this working is again having that core machine and then slotting in new, new content brands, new publishers. These are just examples, whether it be Gen Y News, Gen Y Esports. That's a very scalable base we think to go from, and then we can grow it from there. And the key thing and the key strategic insight that we would have over other agencies, for example, or any of the other um, e-commerce or content studios there are in the market, is that by having access to the audience, the insights, uh, the talent of, of well-known brands, particularly, on, uh, particularly online brands, we will have a USP that they don't have. We think that over time, all of these things will come in, and it's all fairly clear in the next couple of years. But for now, our, our main focus is revenues and cash flow positivity as soon as possible. Um, you know, we, we really, really do think there's an opportunity for a roll-up here, and we've identified some things, but we want to get our core right before we do anything. And so it's important for us to start with the agency and the consultancy side of things. This is just some progress of where we've come to and where we've made so far. So on the wide sales stuff, that's been restructured. There's been a lot of liabilities when we came in to sort out. Um, that's an ongoing sort of process, but it's fully in hand, and we're looking to sort of make an announcement and a decision on the, the future of that particular part of our business quite soon. Um, we have a, a really strong partner in uh, our, the funding guys at ABO, who have made a lot of, who put the money up to save and restructure the company. We spent about £900,000 um, restructuring and dealing with uh, legacy issues with the company. Uh, and now that's put us in a position where very shortly, hopefully, very, very soon, we'll be able to actually formally change the name from Wide Cells to Iconic Labs. In terms of the progress we've made at Iconic Labs, before the name change, we've just soft launched the business, soft launched the agency into, into people. Uh, an exceptional response, um, so much so that we actually can't deal with the demand. We're going to have to look to hire a few people to help us with that. Uh, we're looking to book revenue uh, this month. Uh, we, will book, we will book our first piece of revenue this month. Um, and then we look to scale up from there. Um, our pipeline is made up of a number of different contracts. So we either pitch independently for contracts. This could be a year-long retainers like I showed you before. Or it could be distinct campaigns as someone's launching a new product. Um, or sometimes we actually partner with other big existing um, agencies who have already got the business that need help and our expertise in delivering it. So the pipeline consists of a mixture of all of those things, and obviously that brings a nice balance in terms of stuff that we're pitching for independently. It will provide long-term retained revenue, stuff that we're looking to get, yes, lumpy but large pieces of revenue in straight away, and then also um, smaller but more common nice little piece of revenue from people where we partner up with who just need our expertise or our resources. Um, I think that I've covered it a little bit, but just to reiterate, look, we've got a very clear plan here. We know how to build a business. We did it, you know, we did it on 200 pounds before, so now we've got access to more capital, you know, think what we can do now. But we're not neglecting the fact that we need to get revenues in, we need to get cash flow in. So that's the start. From there, as I've sort of alluded to and touched on very slightly, there's a lot of interesting stuff we can do. I think that the main focus for us is get our fundamental build up core business, and then things from there will just, will just happen reasonably organically in terms of the growth. But then we also do have the option of going, going into the market and acquiring new people over time. I think the other thing that we've always thought about is that you know, we've built our own technology in the past, 
And again, once we build our, let's call it our, our core business, the way that we can market to people wherever we want, we would have the ability to create our own um, social media products as well. And there's obviously potential for a, a huge product coming out of that. So I, I'm going to not too focus too much on these guys, but one of the things that we did notice with Unilad is that we didn't have the experience around us that we would have liked. So we've worked very hard to get a few people from a variety of industries, mostly media, some technology, a bit of finance as well, obviously David Sefton, uh, and we put ourselves in a position uh, to go from there. So there's the situation right now, but thank you very much. Um, so, like, first of all, we know the space better than anyone. So we're in a position where we actually grew up with a lot of these people, um, and I think that you know we never took uh, any investment from anyone. We we just had that 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 money from the start, and we bootstrapped from there. I think a lot of a lot of people took venture capital money, for example, and, and now that might be on the way out. So there are opportunities there. In terms of what we're looking for. We're looking to build some of this ourselves, very clearly, that we can build an agency. You know, myself and Liam have a lot of uh, clients, client contacts, um, and to get the money and the uh, core parts of the business fixed, and then acquire from there. In terms of what we're looking for, I think brand is really, really important, and there's a lot of people that don't have that. Um, and again, again, we are looking for people that will add to the revenue side of things straight away. So there's usually a, I think a pretty clear thing of what we've looked for, and we know what it is probably better than most. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it, how it turns out over the next year. Yeah, hundred percent. This is a business that, in a day, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of interesting things that we can do. If you built the core, then you do you do get a big cost saving. You can immediately acquire people uh, and make some efficiencies and get the cost savings there, but then you also, because of the client contacts that we've got, um, because of how, if you do start making acquisitions, because of the scale you'll get, um, you immediately increase the revenue potential as well. So it's a very, it's, it's frankly, it's an industry right for a roll up to be honest with you.
So European or Japan European campaigns are a, a pretty a pretty sort of like easy area for us to go into. And then finally, the other one we're looking to, not initially but over time, uh, is Singapore looking to target the APAC region as well. We can do content in multiple different languages, um, but I think one of the things that we've learn is actually there's actually usually some quite common characteristics between everyone um, so it's a balance between making it local enough but learning that there are some quite sort of common characteristics that all brands look for particularly if they're doing global campaigns business. There's a few liabilities still on there. Um, it's taken about, we've spent about 900 so far. There's a couple hundred more. Um, at that point, we'll be pretty clear and ready to go from there, basically. So um, our view is that once we've got, you know, that's all part of the process here, in that, you know, that and name change, then that allows us to go from there. But we haven't hung around and just been like, you know, let's just wait for that. We've done our soft launch, and we're going to, you know, book some revenue, which I, I don't know, if, I don't know if White Sales ever actually did. So we thought we would mess around and just get on with it. Thank you very much, John. Cheers. Cheers.